I have an aluminum part and I want to measure its diameter. 0.2315 inches plus or minus 408 micro inches. Let's check that with another tool. This one says it's 0.2293 plus or minus 6.875 micro inches. So what's the real value? It's impossible to be certain. For every measure and the quantity we intend to measure, there's technically a true exact value. If we're talking dimensional measurement, any physical object has an actual size. We're just trying to figure out what it is. The problem is that no measurement method can ever find the exact true value. You get pretty close, but that's about it. No matter how precise our tools may be, there will always be a little more room to be even closer to the right answer. Our goal is just to confidently get as close as possible. The gap between the true value of a dimension and the measured value we can obtain is the measurement uncertainty. The most accepted way to describe measurement uncertainty is through a gauge repeatability and reproducibility study, typically shortened to GR and R. A number of different operators take a number of different parts, they each repeatedly measure those parts, and then compare the results. This does a great job of estimating our repeatability, but it doesn't necessarily speak at all to our accuracy. Measurement uncertainty refers to the dispersion of measured values around the actual measure amp. So in theory, if your aim is off by roughly the same amount each time, but in slightly different directions, the average from your repeated trials should lead you more or less to the actual target in the middle of that dispersion. But it's entirely possible to have really great repeatability, hitting very close to the same measurement every time, and still be inaccurate. High precision can just mean being repeatedly wrong. Instead, we want to get really close to the true value of the measure and directly, not just kind of land somewhere all around it, extrapolate, and hope for the best. And on top of that, we want reliable repeatability, measurements that consistently land close together in repeated trials. We want to increase both our accuracy and our precision. In other words, we want to shrink the measurement uncertainty. One of the ways we do this is through increasingly sophisticated technology that's up to the task of taking such careful measurements. Generally speaking, the smaller the units an instrument can reliably measure, the smaller the amount it's likely to stray from the correct value, right? I mean, you wouldn't say that you can measure down to the micrometer if your measurement tool could be off by a whole dang millimeter. Good precision helps narrow the accuracy window. Another crucial way that we handle measurement uncertainty is, you guessed it, by following strict standards. Here on Metrology Matters, we can't overstate the importance of standards. The guidance from standards for managing uncertainty really help make things less uncertain. For example, the American Society of Mechanical Engineers created the B89.7 series of standards, six short documents addressing several important uncertainty considerations. These include measurement planning, estimating measurement uncertainty, building uncertainty statements, estimating measurement risk, decision rules for accepting and rejecting components, and traceability. These standards also address why any of this uncertainty happens in the first place. What causes us to stray from the measure and? Turns out basically everything. Some factors include the environment you're working in, your reference element, your measurement equipment, the measurement setup, software and calculations, who's doing it, the object you're measuring, how the target characteristic is defined, your measuring procedure, physical constants, and a whole lot more. It's a lot to keep track of, but very important to understand. Overall, having reliable and concrete knowledge of how inaccurate our measurements are and why gives us more confidence in the accuracy of what we report. In other words, it's very useful to be certain about our uncertainty. With all that in mind, let's take one more look at that aluminum part. Now it says it's like 15 micro inches bigger than it was before. Oh right, I've had it in my pocket this whole time. And aluminum expands at 25 parts per million per degree Fahrenheit, so I've probably like quadrupled the uncertainty. I haven't even tested its roundness. I guess I also need to review more about the measure and.